In the year of 1812, Europe was under the influence of the mastermind Napoleon of France. A struggling Russia is now in recession because of the continental system introduced by the French in 1806. Therefore, Tsar Alexander reopened trade with Britain without the consent of Napoleon. The alliance of the two kissers has fallen, and Napoleon is about to make the biggest mistake of his life. Emperor, it seems like Napoleon is getting ready to invade us. W what? But... But I kissed him. You sick. Napoleon assembled the largest army the world had ever seen. The army consisted of 600,000 men along the Russian border. Despite such a strong force, less than half of the army were French. The rest of the manpower came from its allies and subjugated nations such as Prussia, Austria, Warsaw, the Rhine, Spain, the Helvetic Republic, and Italy. In addition to this, Russia's poorly built infrastructure is unable to support more than 220,000 men, and yet Napoleon continued, establishing supply lines from Prussia, Warsaw, and Austria, whilst advancing at lightning speed. On the 24th of June, the ambitious Napoleon began his invasion, believing that it would be a swift victory. Little does he know, he's walking into a massacre. Napoleon pushed his men, many times detaching from supply lines to capture major cities. Men in the vanguard would be able to reach resources first and consume it for themselves, leaving little to no food for the men in the back column. This act of selfishness resulted in the increase of hardship between soldiers. Furthermore, the Russian summer was devastating. It exhausted French supplies and lowered their morale, so much so that thousands of men would die from heat strokes just by marching. Many of Napoleon's marshals and advisors begged Napoleon to stop advancing for some time for the men to rest and regroup with the supply line. However, Napoleon ignored this advice and pursued the retreating Russians relentlessly. The French and Russians barely engaged in battles besides some sneaky cavalry attacks by the Russian Cossacks or battles for major cities. Whilst the Russians were retreating, they scorched the supplies and landscape, destroying the supplies and starving the French soldiers. Napoleon's army was desperately in need of resources as it advanced too fast and too much, which created tension between the Grande Army and the Russian civilians who fought each other for food and water. Despite all these issues, Napoleon was at the doorstep of Moscow, and the largest battle in European history yet began. Both sides had nearly 100,000 well-trained men. However, Russia had the majority of the supplies. The Russians fought persistently, but the refined artillery tactics of Napoleon's army pulled through and occupied Moscow. Sir, Napoleon's captured Moscow and told us to surrender. What do we do? Hmm, let's... Never mind. Oh! Uh, yeah, no. Napoleon had denied his soldiers to ransack Moscow for its supplies until it was too late. The Russian police had released arsonists and prisoners to burn down its most beloved city and most of the supplies had been reduced to ashes. As winter approached, and there was no reply from St. Petersburg, Napoleon saw the horror coming and began to pull out of Moscow. However, the Russian army had recovered, while Napoleon's marshals and vanguard were struggling to maintain the supply lines and protect the flanks. As Napoleon retreated with his men, they were often stalked by the ruthless Russian Cossacks who had disrupted French supply lines on many different occasions. The French supplies were sacked, forcing them to murder their cavalry horses for food, and the unlucky men who were unable to gather resources during the retreat were picked off by the Cossacks or died by starvation. In addition to the malnourishment of the Grande Army, clothing was an issue as Napoleon's men were mainly wearing summer clothes. The French now had to take clothing from their dead comrades to survive. This caused a breakdown of the French chain of commands with many soldiers confused on who was the actual general or soldiers dismissing commands issued by a marshal as they accused them of being enlistments wearing high-ranking clothes. One soldier even said, I am sure that if I had not found any horse flesh myself, 
I would have turned cannibal. The largest and most experienced army in the world had just been reduced to less than 25,000 men. Without a majority of horses for the French cavalry, most well-trained soldiers dead, and competent marchers nowhere to be seen. The once great emperor of France, Napoleon, had lost the Napoleonic Wars. All things considered, invading Russia was Napoleon's biggest mistake. Many historians argue that the Russian invasion was the biggest factor to Napoleon's downfall, hence instigating the question, what if Napoleon never invaded Russia? In our universe of Europe, Napoleon would stay allied with Tsar Alexander despite Russia breaking the continental system. The continental system was supposed to weaken the British economy by restricting any nations in mainland Europe from trading with Britain. Whilst attempting to strengthen their economy as consumer goods such as sugar and tea will only be accessible in mainland Europe, which were mainly France's allies and puppets. A recession would be evident in many parts of Europe, therefore collapsing the continental system. If Napoleon did not invade Russia despite breaking the continental system, other nations would assume that they could reopen trade with Britain without any retaliation from France. If Napoleon invaded those countries but not Russia, he would be seen as a hypocrite, first lowering his popularity among his puppets, allies, and possibly the French people. This would lead to many protests in the streets of Europe, and rebellions would occur everywhere, regaining his control over Europe. Similar to this, if Napoleon did not invade those states, Britain's economy would again skyrocket as many nations would reopen trade with the British Empire, proving the continental system useless. Quite comparable with what happened chronologically, Britain would then pay Prussia, Sweden, and maybe Austria to engage in warfare against France, ultimately weakening Napoleon's dominance over the European continent. Despite all these struggles, Napoleon would have still remained Emperor of France, as his military would crush any rebellions. To conclude, Napoleon's popularity would significantly decrease, which would initiate many protests and riots. However, it wouldn't decrease to the point that his reign would collapse as he ran with an iron fist suppressing any rebellions. As stated previously, the continental system was supposed to strengthen France's economy, although quite the opposite happened. The British Navy was just too powerful, and French shipbuilding or fishing would be near impossible as the British would just bomb the ports or capture any fishermen. Many coastal industries would collapse, plummeting the French economy. However, Napoleon was an economic mastermind. Within a few years of being emperor, Napoleon's economic reforms fixed the dying French economy after the revolution. It is very likely that Napoleon would fix the French economy in a few years of plummeting, stabilizing it. If he didn't need to focus on war, which in this universe would happen as he wouldn't have invaded Russia. Although looking back at what would have happened to Napoleon's reputation, it is very evident that the continental system would collapse. Despite this, the British Navy would still ruthlessly bombard the French ports. However, if Napoleon never invaded Russia, the two superpowers would be unstoppable and either create a navy just as strong as the British or have more garrisons near French ports stopping the British bombardments. Moreover, Napoleon's trade would still be enormous as he had many puppets which he could force to trade with him or Napoleon could convince Tsar Alexander, a close ally, to increase trade with him. Overall, Napoleon would have stabilized the French economy despite British intervention if he had invaded Russia. France's economy would be too large for the British to destroy and without invading Russia, France would still have numerous amounts of manpower to fix the ports and establish garrison forces. One of the most important factors to Napoleon's defeat was his exhausted and diminished military. Napoleon gathered 600,000 men from all over continental Europe. Many of those were garrisoned in subjugated nations to hold control. Without the excessive manpower to stop protests, riots, and rebellions, Napoleon's rule over Europe collapsed. Furthermore, 96% of Napoleon's men were lost in his invasion of Russia, many of which were his veteran guards and were very experienced. Therefore, during the Battle of Leipzig, Napoleon had to rely on inexperienced new recruits and untrustworthy allies. 
which ultimately led to his downfall in 1814. Moreover, the Russian invasion also destroyed the French cavalry and artillery, which devastated the French intelligence. If Napoleon did not invade Russia, he would still have thousands of men as garrisons and could divert his full attention to the Peninsula War. Despite the might of the Spanish population and British military causing havoc in Iberia, Napoleon with his refined battle tactics can slowly, but surely, achieve victory. Additionally, Napoleon had many competent and brilliant marshals that would further train the Grande Army to newer heights. Despite some cowardly behavior during the Hundred Days, Napoleon's tremendous achievements would influence bravery and pride into the generals, hence being able to efficiently and masterfully upskill France's army. Moreover, France would have retained their prominent cavalry and artillery had they not invaded Russia. With these light cavalry as scouts, the Prussians would have been seen hours before they arrived in Waterloo. And the high numbers of artillery would have decimated the British infantry squares, and Napoleon would have possibly won in the Waterloo campaign. Had France maintained their alliance with Russia, it would be unlikely for Napoleon's empire to collapse, and together, the joint forces of France and Russia who substantially surpassed the numbers in the Russian invasion. As there would be barely any tension between the two major powers, the French cavalry would study the Russian Cossacks, following their training and battle style. This would create a formidable cavalry force and ruthlessly wipe out their foes, just like what the Cossacks did against the French in the Russian invasion. As one member of the Cossacks said, and I quote, if Napoleon had Cossacks in his army, he would have been Emperor of China long ago. For the most part, Napoleon and Tsar Alexander's military strength combined would be unstoppable, and protests or riots wouldn't have arisen that led to Napoleon's weakened reputation. Furthermore, the French cavalry would be trained to a ruthless section of the Grande Army, which would stop any British invasions or Prussian betrayals in their tracks. A nation requires a powerful military to both defend their homeland and attack foreign powers. But what is a military without armament technology? With an improved economy, friendly relations with Russia, and control over many nations, France would easily be able to establish a new scientific community that has tremendous amounts of funding. One that would compete with the Royal Society, as many bright minds were under the influence of French propaganda. Napoleon's battle tactics relied on swift and powerful defeats, aided by fast cavalry and light cannons. However, a crucial part of Napoleon's setbacks in Russia was the slow and heavy supply lines, denying his men the ability to advance at full speed. The French logistic department saw this flaw in the invasion of Russia, but was ignored by Napoleon as he was more focused on Russia. Despite not invading Russia, Napoleon would have still be warned by the logistics management and as he was not under stress from invading such a big country, he would listen and require the new researchers to invent or improve the slow and heavy supply lines to faster and more efficient ones. On the topic of military research, the deadly combination of high funding and intelligent research would allow France to be the first to invent automatic guns and better ships such as the Gatling gun and the ironclad. This would allow France to deny British invasions easily and possibly empower France to finally invade Britain. Military research would be very prominent, but it is not to say that the quotidian inventions would not be made. Similar to the funding in the military, a lot of funding would be given to healthcare and education to better the living standards in France. This would grant many prominent inventors to produce new devices and gadgets earlier. Gadgets that were invented during and after the Napoleonic era, such as the stethoscope, the braille language, the hairdryer, and photography, would be made earlier and in better quality. Napoleon wanted to be popular among his comrades in France, and the improvement to living conditions in France would certainly raise his popularity among the French people. Well, maybe except women. In short, a new race between France and Britain would be formed but not in militarism or imperialism, but technological advancements. This contest for power would allow both nations to invent items faster. Who knows, we might have gotten flying cars if this had continued. Napoleon was not generally interested in the colonization of Africa, 
Instead, he wanted to control the entirety of Europe under his rule. Although, that is not to say that he wasn't intrigued by the idea of colonization. With the improvements of the military and economy, Napoleon's advisors and himself would definitely need elsewhere to expand and increase their monopoly of resources. France and Russia had substantially bad relations with the Ottoman Empire, as Napoleon failed to defeat them in Egypt in 1798 to 1801, and many wars between Russia and Turkey in the past definitely did not help improve relations. Therefore, they would want to seek revenge and possibly get some sweet, shiny gold from Turkey. Hence, the ambitious Napoleon Bonaparte and Tsar Alexander would declare war on the Ottoman Empire. The combined military force of France and Russia would overwhelm the Turkish, despite having mountainous terrain as the refined cavalry from both sides could easily penetrate through the Ottoman defenses, crippling Istanbul and Ankara. This is when colonization would begin as colonies of France would be set up in Egypt and Syria, whilst puppet governments would form under the rule of France and Russia. Furthermore, Sweden was surrounded by Napoleon and his allies, and despite being ruled by a French marshal themselves, they were really not keen on joining France as they invaded Swedish Pomerania a few years back. However, the peer pressure from Russia and the victory in Turkey would force Sweden to join. Portugal, Sardinia, and Sicily would also fall under French rule as they would be overwhelmed by the numerous French invasions. Moreover, to control the Mediterranean, Gibraltar would be annexed and Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia would be colonized. Any British navies within the French occupied sea would be decimated, and Malta would once again be under the control of France. The United States of America would also be keen to join in with France as they both went through a revolution against their oppressors, and also want to invade British-owned Canada after their defeat <coughs> in 1812. In conclusion, mainland Europe and northern Africa would all be subjugated under one Napoleonic faction, and any British landings would be impossible. The British would lose naval control over the Mediterranean and would be forced to sail around Africa for trade in Asia as they were unable to utilize the Suez Canal. The USA would also be a minor ally to France and grow to be a superpower as well. The average life expectancy of a male near the middle of the 1800s was around 40 years, whereas Napoleon lived until 51. Not too shabby if I say so myself. The Emperor of St. Helena apparently died due to stomach cancer, although it is debated among historians. Had Napoleon not invaded Russia, it is pretty unlikely that the aging emperor would have survived longer, although the medical advances in France would help him live a few years longer. After Napoleon's death, it is certain that Napoleon's son would have claimed the throne, essentially giving power over most of Europe to a teenager. I wonder how that would go. The country would definitely see a recession in many things due to the horrible decisions made by the child, but as Napoleon too matured, France would return back to its mighty glory. Anyhow, Napoleon would go on to pass away at the age of 21, and would most likely be succeeded by Napoleon's brother, Joseph. During the rest of the 19th century, there would be nothing interesting besides some ordinary rebellions and Prussian betrayals that would be crushed by the French army. The French Empire would again attempt to invade Britain, but fail because of the ocean. Although the French Navy would finally be able to compete with the Royal Navy after countless trainings in the Mediterranean Sea. Anyhow, France would again be in recession and would most likely collapse near the start of the 20th century. The two deadliest war in human history, World War I and World War II, would be avoided. However, the death toll of the Napoleonic Wars would likely be high, surpassing the casualties of the First World War. German nationalism, along with Italian nationalism, would be extremely prevalent after and during French occupation which would allow for them to unify at substantial levels and speed, although the day of these unifications would be delayed to the 1900s. Furthermore, there wouldn't be a rise of socialism and communism, as the German-born Karl Marx would be unable to publish the Communist Manifesto. Therefore, your favorite Meat Shield USSR would not be born. A republic turned dictatorship will suddenly go into stagnation after countless battles. 
an old and depressed Napoleon would pass away no later than 1830, not seeing his empire collapse. France would prosper under a prominent scientific group bettering the living standards of France significantly and boosting the French economy. The Grande Army would be trained into a formidable force, ruthlessly destroying foreign powers at lightning speed. And with the aid of the powerful Russian military, great powers in Europe and Asia would fall and be subjugated under French and Russian rule. Europe will firmly be in the hands of Napoleon, with colonization efforts beginning in Africa, and the developing nation of the United States of America would rise to become a global superpower, competing with Britain. The first French empire would follow Napoleon's bloodline until the collapse of France in the early 20th century, prolonging the unification of Germany and Italy, denying the rise of communism and would impact so much more that what would seem normal in our modern world would be extremely confusing to this timeline.